Our bees have died every year. And I know some of you have that same problem because you live way up north and it gets way cold. This time we're gonna build the bee barn. This is normally where we keep our bees like for overwinter. They get to live in both of these. And that requires you to use these two frames, one up here and one down there, which means when you wanna inspect them, you've got to take this box off to get to the frames that are underneath it. And if you insulate the whole thing, then you've got to be able to take it all back apart to be able to inspect them. So we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to build what's called the bee barn, which requires us to make these special frames right here. This is a pattern we got from our friend Scott, but it goes in here so that when you put it in, it goes all the way down and sits in there like that. When you want to inspect them, you just pull the one out and inspect it. I know what you're thinking, there's a big gap right here. They'll fill this gap right in and they'll put brood all in here and this will all be one solid piece rather than having this big piece of wood here, right, like that and a space between them like that. They don't like that so much, apparently. So we're going to fix it. But that requires some extra work because we need these pieces longer and nobody apparently makes them that way. So we gotta build them ourselves. First thing that we need to do is take these apart because we need, what, 20 tops and 20 bottoms. Oh, look at that. I know I got it. We got all those little tiny bread nails out. Now I'm gonna take a hammer and try to knock this bottom part off without messing up the comb. We're gonna try, because we wanna reuse these. We're gonna save all these and put them into the new frame for building. There we go. Gentle, come out, yeah. All right, so this is one bottom that we're keeping. Just gonna clean it up a little bit with my hiding tool. There we go. We'll set this one aside. We've got six now, six bottoms. And we'll go ahead and take out gently. There we go. This is the trash piece. There we go. Set this guy aside. The other ones, we'll be using those again. Clean this guy up. And we'll just keep making more of them. So it's time to reassemble. My job is to build these parts right here to make them. Here's one of the short ones we took apart very carefully to keep it perfect. But we do have this pattern here that we got from Scott. And so we're gonna use the pattern. We're gonna use this, we're gonna use this, and we're gonna rebuild these guys so that they are extra long. We also need to cut some supports for the corners here because these are gonna be really heavy when they're all full of of comb and honey, and then some little blocks that go in here. So we're gonna get started and try to try to do this efficiently. We're gonna start off with this piece of two by six. This is our pattern that we've got. We gotta cut it off to the right length. And then we're going to run it through the table saw and saw slices off of it. My thought is somehow I want to cut a groove in each end because we've got to cut that groove out and we've got to cut that groove out of every single one of them and there's 40 of them. So what if we could what if we could cut that groove in here and then when we slice it, Jules, it has a groove. The groove's already in it. Yeah. Can you use a router maybe? Maybe. I don't know yet. I'm gonna try to figure it out. If I figure it out, I'll show you how I did it. So we've got our pattern here and we've got it set up so that it should be the right height and the right width away for just one cut. I don't know, I don't know what we're gonna do with the rest yet, but we're getting it, we're getting there. Looks like it's the right depth, the right width. 
So we've got our two slots cut, but we got to get rid of the center part on both ends. I'm going to try to do it with the router. We could make a bunch of passes with the table saw, but I want to try this. You're like a scarecrow. Yeah. Look at that. I clean it up just a little bit. Got a little bit we missed, but that's, I think that's gonna work, Jules. Yeah, that's awesome. I think. Yeah, give it a try. So you gotta make the two by six a little skinnier? Yeah, it'll have to be, we'll have to cut each one because I think it'll be easy. I, don't, I think it's gonna be really hard to like rip that down. Mm -hmm. You think? I don't know. It seems like Seems like it's like more than I want to do. <laughs> All right, so, hold on. <coughs> Woo, okay. So there we go with that. And uh, what do we need to do now, Jules? I think you need to cut one. Yeah, it's true. Let me finish cleaning this up and then we'll cut one. We've got our sample piece. Slide it right in here and it's like perfect. So we're gonna try to cut one off of here. That should be it. We will have to trim a little bit off of this side here. So you can see this side's fatter than this side. But let's see if the tops and the bottoms fit on it. Perfect, Ooh, huh? That's nice. That's good. Yeah. Bottom. Nice job. There we go, man. Good job, babe. That's it. So That'll cool. Be it. Yeah, that'll actually work. So we need 40 of those. <laughs> One down. One down. A billion more to go. We got 42 of them so we can mess up two and still have enough and you my friend yeah. are being very messy over here I'm kidding <laughs> you got some that we spun huh that yeah, you're taking apart all these right here are ones we spun and so they are super super sticky wow <laughs> better make a good progress it's cool you only got a few uh, more to go huh um i think three more Three more frames to take cool. apart. Cool. Sweet. Yeah. Good job, man. Maybe we'll be ready at the same time. Maybe. So now, if you can see, they're all a little bit too wide. So we've got to rip them all down just a little bit. So crank this guy back down. So right like that, then we're gonna have to trim this side and this side off up to a certain point. I don't know how I'm gonna do that part yet. I haven't figured that out. So this right here and that right there is not as pretty as I would like it. But as far as size goes, it's perfect. Just what we want. I'm gonna shoulder right here. How to do that and make that pretty. Okay, all right. I think I'm getting it. got all of our long pieces cut. That's the piece that goes right here. Now we need to cut these blocks and these blocks so that we can put it all together. But they came out great, man. Look at that. Looks professional. All right, so we got this scrap piece of wood here and we need those slots for the foundation to go into. 
So we're gonna cut the whole thing whoosh, and whoosh, put the slots in there. Then we can chop it up into its pieces. Something shines on the horizon. It's leading me the long way home. It's giving me a new direction. I feel it rising in my bones. Take my soul and make it glow. And take these roses, watch them grow. This is what our little tiny block looks like. Isn't that cute? So cute, man. We already got the grooves. Can you see the grooves? Oh, yeah. Grooves. This is where the foundation is going to sit. Looks nice. So we got to cut how many of these? 40. Or 80. 60. 60. 40 of them. I <laughs> got a lot of them. But Marty has this set up, so it'll be really easy just to choo -choo -choo, bam, knock them out. I'm going to do that. Marty's going to grab himself a little bit of coffee. Be my map and be my compass. Be my only guiding light. We gotta cut how many? 80. 80. 80 triangles. It's a lot of triangles, guys. <laughs> it's a lot of moving the saw back and forth. Yes, it is. But it'll be worth it in the end to have a good, strong frame. Yeah, because if they get filled with honey, they're gonna be heavy. So, anyway, there we go. We just keep turning the saw back and forth. Yesterday we got all of our parts cut, and so today we get to assemble them. Before we start assembling them though, I wanna take three minutes and tell you about the sponsor of today's video, it's Jackery. This is the Jackery Explorer 3000 Pro. You saw us using it yesterday to run our table saw, to run our chop saw, we used it all day long. We've still got plenty of power left in it to use it today as well, because it has a 3000 24 watt hour battery in it and it can produce up to 3000 watts it's got a portable suitcase design like this with wheels on the bottom so you can easily transport it around and a good thing for us up here in north idaho is it can operate all the way down to negative four degrees fahrenheit it's super quiet while it's on in fact right now it's not making any noise at all. And you can charge it really fast off of the wall. In 2.4 hours, you can get this guy all the way charged up or you can use it with its solar panels. Check them out. This right here is a 200 watt solar panel. Comes in a cool zipper case. Go ahead and set it up for you here just so you can see how it works. Basically, you unfold it, flip out these little guys here. They're like stands for it. You can get the proper angle for the sun. Take our fancy, super bright cable. You're never going to lose this thing in the snow, man. I'll tell you what. Plug it into the solar panel. And plug it into the unit. There we go. We got solar power now. It is a super cloudy day, but we are still able to charge this guy off of that solar panel. We're making 24 watts right now, bringing in free power from the sun. Let's take a quick look at the front of it here. We've got, of course, an easy to read display here. You've got your 12 volt outlet here, cigarette lighter style outlet. And then you've got some USB outlets, USB-C outlets. You've got four 120 volt, 20 amp outlets and a 30 amp 120 volt outlet right here. So this thing can power a lot of different things all at the same time. And when you see this outlet right here, guys, that is really cool because they have got a transfer switch for your house. So you can use this unit to actually back up certain circuits within your house using their specialized transfer switch. Jackery also has a smart app that you can install on your phone and control the whole thing right from your fingertips. If you're looking for a solar generator that you can use to power your tools all around your homestead where you don't have power, 
or you want to back up your house during a power outage, check out the Jackery Explorer 3000 Pro. There is a link down in the description below and a discount code for you. Check this out though. This is a big load. What can Jackery power with a 3000 Pro? Almost anything. So we take a side and a top. We're gonna put a little glue on here just to give it some extra holding ability. Pop this guy on there, put a nail in it, just to hold it extra good. There we go, take another side. More glue. Right, now, we got our corner pieces. I know what you're thinking. You're gonna go right into your finger. Nails aren't long enough. So there we go. Step one is done. We've got a nice sturdy frame. And you're probably wondering why are we putting these in here like this? Because the guy who invented this technique said that you gotta put them in there. Because these get really heavy and when you try to lift them out, you don't want your frame to fall apart or break. So we, we secure it extra with these guys. Let's go check on the chickens. Got to get through our super secret lock on our gate. Hello, Look at He was going to get you, dude. I'm watching you. He wants to get you. I'm so nice. Mr. Roo, protect her. Come on, Mr. Roo. Let him attack you. Let him attack me. Yeah. It doesn't hurt, does it? Oh. <laughs> she pecked it like me. So this chicken likes to attack Jules. He won't attack me or Seth. Oh, but he Mr. likes- Mr. Roo tries to protect me. Yeah, Mr. Roo protects her, huh, Mr. Roo? He's claimed me. You're his girl. <laughs> yeah, see, he does a funny little dance. Mr. Roo. You see it? Yeah, he likes you. Yeah, but Samson, he started getting all weird and just the last week, he started attacking me. So I think we're gonna have to do something about that. Cause it's scary. I come out here, but I have to watch my back and I don't wanna have to do that with chickens. I've got too many like paint spots on me. <laughs> wanna help me catch Samson? Why? So I could sit on him? Sure. <laughs> you got him. So my friend TD told me that I should try to sit on him and maybe that will stop him from attacking me. So let's sit on the chicken. <laughs> All right, Samson, we're going to have a talk here. No more attacking me. Otherwise, you're going to be in the pot, buddy. We can't have that. I don't know. I never wanted, I never wanted two roosters, but we ended up with three <laughs> and this one was so silent for so long that I didn't know he was a rooster for a long time. I think that's long enough. Yeah. Give it a try. Right. And catch him again tomorrow. No more. No more. <laughs> okay. No more being mean. I don't want no mean roosters on the homestead. <laughs> Got it? It'd be nice. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. So there's one right there. And we'll alternate them. We'll have half of them with the small one on the bottom. We're using the comb 
that response so they don't have to work quite as hard to rebuild that comb. Plus there's a lot of loose honey in there that they can use for food. And we'll put new ones up here on the top or vice versa, we'll flip it every other one. That way this gap here won't go straight across the whole hive and they'll, they'll fill this in and it'll all become one solid, one solid comb of stuff. We're gonna pick up our bees in just a few days and our all styrofoam hive box is on order. So we're gonna get that in just a second. Jules is actually, she's gonna go play with the chickens. Take you over there. You guys are gonna play chicken stuff and I am gonna give you a quick tour of the homestead so you can see what it looks like in early spring. Let's go. First stop on our tour here, guys, is the woodshed. I wanna show you how much wood we've used so far this year. Whoop this much right here i'm guessing it's about four cords of wood that we've used we still got a little bit left over there i think that's going to get us through the rest of the spring you notice i'm in a t-shirt today and uh we've got all of this that is going to be seasoned for a whole nother summer before we burn it next year so we'll refill that side this summer it'll dry for a summer but this one's gonna be like extra special. Seth, I want you to cut to mom and the chickens right now. All right, little chickadees. It's time to clean out your pen. <laughs> yes, it is. We got the coop all cleaned up from the winter, all fresh bedding laid down. It smells a lot better. We went ahead and named him Samson. <laughs> I think he's showing off for you. Yeah, let's take a look in here. Fresh bedding on everything. The boxes have good bedding in them. Got my little golf balls. That just helps to train the chickens not to pick any of the eggs. And so far this flock has not picked not a single one. That's a pretty good trick somebody taught us. I don't know where I learned it, but a while ago. So now we'll cruise over here in between the woodshed and the apartment. We've got our 1000 gallon propane tank. Let's see how much fuel we've got left. They only filled it to 80% last summer because that's like what the rules are. It's a thousand gallon tank. They filled it to 80, which would have been 800 gallons. And we're down to 50, almost 50. So it looks like we've used almost 300 gallons in, um, oh man, it's starting to rain um, since, since probably July. And it's, what is it now? It's April now. So we're not using much fuel. Let's see, cruise over here. Look at, just notice how green it's turning out. Solar panels, all doing good. We have not had to run the generator in, I don't know, a couple months probably at least, since, probably since the end of February. I gotta get up here, man, because it's raining hard now. Let me let you in on a little secret. Jules actually filmed cleaning out those chickens a couple of weeks ago, but we forgot to put it in an earlier video. So we're putting it in this video for you. That's why you notice there's a lot more snow on the ground it stopped and then it started again. Fire pit, we already used it. It was awesome. Uh, but you notice, man, this is all, this is called Dutch white clover. We planted it last year. We redid all of this last year. Planted it all in that Dutch white clover and it's coming back beautifully. Hi chickens. Yeah, The front porch, still a giant disaster. Hummingbird feeders are up, but the hummingbirds are not back yet. I think it's still too cold for them. That is going to do it, my friends, for this video. We picked out this video right up here for you to go ahead and watch next. But in the meantime, we hope you guys have a really great day and keep smiling.